Okay, everybody. Uh, this this time we're going to go over um, solving quadrilaterals based on properties of parallelograms. We're going to be solving for sides, angles, variables, and the like. Um, for uh, number one, we have uh, a quadri quadrilateral, which happens to uh, look like a square, but we don't know for sure. Uh, we do know that it is a parallelogram. They tell us in the directions. And one of the properties of parallelograms is if you have one right angle, you have four right angles. So to solve for x and y, we can set each of those equal to 90. All right, and divide up here. 3x equals 90. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 30. And here we're going to divide both sides by 4. And 90 divided by 4, 22.5. Okay, and number two, um, we are dealing with a parallelogram. One of the properties is opposite sides are congruent, so we can set 8y equal to 88 and solve for y that way. We're going to divide both sides by 8, and y equals 11. Okay, now we have another property again. One 90-degree angle, all four angles are 90 degrees. We can set that 6x equal to 90. If we divide both sides by 6, 90 divided by 6, 15. All right, on uh, number 3, uh, parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent, and by these tick marks or notches, we know that in this case all four sides are congruent. Uh, we can first solve for x by setting 6x equal to 12. Divide both sides by 6, x is 2. And then since this side 3y is equal to this side 12, we can set 3y equal to 12, and y equals 4. All right, for number 4, um, we know that one of the properties says sub supplementary uh, angles in a parallelogram happen if they are um, consecutive. So in essence, 3y plus 6x, these two angles added together are supplementary. They equal 180. Um, kind of hard to do since they're both different variables. Uh, let's check out these two, 6x and 12x. If we add those together, we can set those equal to 180. The rule is consecutive angles in a parallelogram are supplementary. Okay, so this is going to be 18x. After combining like terms, and then we're going to divide by 18. The x is 10. Okay, now we can also use another property of the opposite angles being congruent. The 3y and the 12x, I'm going to set those equal to each other. And even though they're different variables, I now know what x is. x is 10, 120 times, or 12 times 10 is 120. 3y can be equal to 120. And if we divide both sides by 3, we get y is 40. Okay, down here for number five. Um, again, we can use the property that consecutive angles are supplementary. Now I know we're cutting this in half, but I'm going to look at this entire angle. 60 plus 55 is 115. I'm going to add it to 5x, and then I'll set it equal to 180 because I know they're supplementary. All right, and then. Uh, subtract 115 from both sides. 180 minus 115 is 65. We'll divide both sides by 5. X is 13. So now I solve for X. Now I have to solve for Y. Um, what I can do is put this 13 in for this X right here. And 5 times 13 is 65. And then now I can set the 2y equal to the 65 and solve for y that way, because opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. Dividing both sides by 2, y comes out to be 32.5 degrees. Well, well, not degrees, but just the value. The entire angle is degrees. 32.5. All right, uh, proper for number 6, the property that opposite sides are congruent. Um, will help us solve this. I'm just going to set this up for you. 30x equals 150. We can solve for x. And then we can set 2y equal to 72x. And plug in x from there.